Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 more features of Google Docs that you should know how to use. This is a follow-up to my previous video on 10 features of Google Docs you should know how to use. That means we've got 20 now. Let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a neat little function in the sharing settings. So by default, your document is private. Let's hit the share button. And before I invite my buddy Max to work on this with me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that Max can't change the permissions and he can't share it. That way he doesn't give access to the document to somebody who I might not intend to have access to the document. And here I can also disable the options for viewers and commenters to download, print, and copy. So you can see there, they can see that option or turn that option off. So that's the first thing that we're going to look at. I'm not going to share that one with Max right now. Now, we just shared that document or we sh shared that document, but we can also publish the document. If we go to publish to the web, I can now publish this document, and this is different than sharing. This creates a simple standalone web page of our document, and anyone who has this link can view the document without needing to sign into a Google account. Let's see what it looks like. So this is what the document looks like if you just use that publish to the web option. Now, if you use this, make sure you realize that theoretically, this can be indexed by Google and people can find it through a Google search. So just be aware of that when you use that option. Now, if you wanna unpublish it, you simply say stop publishing and now it's no longer published to the web. Now here we have my standard font. I have my Arial font in size 13, but I wanna look at some other fonts that we can use. And so let's go up here and change out our fonts. And we can go into more fonts and we'll find a menu of more than 400 font choices. And you can scroll through them if you like. You can narrow down your choices here. You can narrow them here. Now let's say we want handwriting type of fonts and maybe we'll use the Yellowtail font. Click OK. And now I'm using Yellowtail and say, this is a demonstration of the Yellowtail font. And just like any other fonts, I can simply highlight it and then make it larger. Now, while we're here with this demonstration of the Yellowtail font, let's look at how we can apply a border to just one section of a document. So to put a border around just a section of the document, I'm going to go up to my Format button and paragraph styles and choose borders and shading. And let's choose a border width. Let's say I wanna do three point border width. I can choose solid or dashed lines. I can change the border color. I can make it orange. I can even set a background color for it and make it white green. And I can even put a little paragraph padding around it. Let's apply that. And now we see just that section of my document has that border and that highlighting around just that section. Now you can do you can do this for any section of your document. I can highlight a different section of my document, go back up here to format, paragraph styles, borders and shading, and I might say just do one point and apply that. And now I have just a nice simple border around that section of the document. Next, let's take a look at some of the neat things you can do with images in your document.
So we're gonna insert an image into this document and we're going to apply some borders and text to that image. So we're gonna insert image. I'm going to upload from my computer a, an image that I have stored on my desktop. And I wanna use this image right here. And let's apply a border to that image. So just click on it once. And then we can go up here and select our border weight. And we can select our border color. Maybe I'll make that one red. And we can change out the type of border and make it dotted, dashed, or a solid line all the way around. Now, we can also choose our wrap text options, but we also have options for behind text or in front of text. And I can now write on top of this and say, and say this is a space for images. And we'll see right there, I'm moving the, doc, moving the image within the document and my font is still there. Move my font down and I can move my font around. I can make it a different color so it stands out. I can even just swap it out and say, this is a giant buffalo statue. Now, if I wanna edit this even more, I can click on the image again, and we can go into here our size and rotation, or hit all image options to open up this menu on the right-hand side where we can change the size of the image. We can even rotate the image if we want to. We can adjust our text wrapping, our positioning. We can apply different color filters if we like. And down here in our adjustments, we can even adjust the transparency, brightness, and contrast of that image. Now I'm going to move my cursor back down the page and let's take a look at some of the other features that we can do with text in our document, including the option to make a dynamic list. And this is a relatively new feature in Google Docs. We'll see here the checklist option. It's right next to the bullet point options and the numbered list options with a checklist option. And you'll see when I use that, it automatically put that checkbox there. And I can say, Take out the papers, take out the trash, don't talk back. Now, when each one of these things is done, you just click on that box in the document and it crosses it out. So you've created dynamic lists right inside of your Google document. Great option for project management and keeping track of the things that you or your partners need to do. Now we have that option there for our checklist, but we also have these options for bullet points. And most people just click on the bulleted list and say, this is the first item. This is the second item. But a lot of people overlook there are other options besides those default bullet points, including using stars and arrows. Let's now switch that up and I now have arrows. And if I tab over, we'll see that changes from an arrow to a diamond. And if I tab over again, and now it's just a little bullet point. And I can undo that by hitting Control Z and I'm back to using arrows or tab over and I have a diamond shape. Next, let's take a look at what we can do with drawings inside of our Google document. So let's scroll down here a little bit and we'll go to insert and we'll insert a new drawing. And what this does is brings up a drawing tablet or drawing screen where we can do a simple scribble and I can make a smiley face or attempt to make a smiley face. 
and I can save and close that. And that's now inserted into the document. But I can also use some of the other drawing tools in here that include using shapes. And let's say I want to use a shape like this one. And I want to make a little diagram. Well, perhaps inside that diagram, perhaps inside that, that shape, I'm going to write branches of government. And I'm going to, again, add another little shape. And I'll start to make my diagram of the branches of government. Now, I want to reuse that exact same shape that I just made there. So I just right-clicked on it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. I'm going to do that one more time. So I need three boxes of the exact same size. And there I have them. And perhaps I don't want to fill this in myself. I want to have my students fill it in. So I'm going to leave them blank. I'm just going to save and close. And now that's right inside of my document. On a similar note, you can also insert charts into your Google document by going to the insert menu and selecting chart and using one of the chart types here. Let's select bar graph. And that's inserted the chart. Now, this is just placeholder material. If I want to edit the content of this bar chart or bar graph, let's click on this little drop down menu and select open source. And this will open a Google spreadsheet where we can then edit the chart. So let's scroll up here. And first of all, let's take a look and we'll see this as period one, period two. If we want to change that, we certainly can. Team one, two, three, four. If we want to change those titles, we certainly can. So let's go here, call it team A, team B, team C, and team D. We can change out the values here. Let's make it 56, make that one 75. And we can then, and we'll see that the chart is automatically updating here inside of the spreadsheet. Now I can also further edit the display of this chart and edit the chart. And we can change out all kinds of things of the chart styles and the setup. So let's go here to chart style. We can change our background color and make it orange if we want to. We can change the fonts if we like to. And I'm gonna leave it as is with those little changes. Now back here in the document, we'll just hit the update button and we now see the updated version of that chart. So next, let's take a look at the integrated web search inside of Google Documents. This is our 10th feature to look at. So let's say my students are doing some research about this giant buffalo statue and they say and they know that this statue is called Dakota Thunder. It is found in Jamestown, North Dakota. It weighs, and they're not quite sure what it weighs. So if they wanna do a little web search, hit this little explore button in the bottom right corner, and they can do a web search without having to leave the document that they're working on right now. So they can start doing a search, Dakota Thunder, and they'll see a suggestion for Buffalo, and we get some web results right here. And they can see just by reading that little snippet that it's six feet tall and it weighs 60 tons. So we're gonna say it weighs 60 tons. Now they need to cite the source of their information. Google makes that very easy. Just click on that little site as a footnote button that pops up whenever they hover over one of these little tabs and it inserted a footnote into the document for the student. And we'll even see when it was accessed right there. So those are 
10 more features of Google Documents that you should know how to use and your students should know how to use as well. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.